equinoxes and solstices is to fish. And I'm lucky enough to be here in the northern Bighorn Mountains in Wyoming to watch the sunrise, the first day of summer, here on the Medicine Wheel, which is a calendar that the natives would clock, kind of to mark the time when they would come for their winter grounds down lower in the basin behind me. And once the summer hit, it was warm enough generally to come up and start hunting. So today, after the sunrise is on the wheel, instead of hunting, I'll be doing more fishing, but it's still a beautiful place to kind of clock the turning of the season and watch the sunrise on a great time of the year. Summer's here, it's time to go see what these fish are doing. The dogs and I came to this beautiful place with a little trout stream behind us in the willows to help you pay more attention to the end of your line through using your leader. And I'll explain the different leader styles to help you see what your fly is doing, to help you see what the fish are doing. And by paying careful attention to all these details, you will in the end catch more fish. But it goes so far beyond catching fish. It's good to be in your environment, pay attention, maybe camp out a little bit, spend the night, see what the moon and the stars and the sun is doing. And in the end, after this short hike, you'll see exactly how paying careful attention will help you catch more fish. So I've snuck in through the willows and I can see right in front of me, I have two and they look like, I'm sure they're cutthroat, who knows what subspecies, because there's a mix in the stream, but right in front of me in the super slick, clear water. So to not disturb them, I've got this really long Euro style nymphing, I just kind of call them a contact fishing leader because we're just keeping direct contact to our flies. Got a little pheasant tail thing on and a little purple jig thing on. I'm going to flip it out and keep close contact direct contact to those flies so as soon as they take it I can set and only my leader will be in the water no fly line. Let's see what happens right after this. My flies are off my snake guides and I'm holding them right in my hand to get Keep them untangled. I've got just a little bit of fly line and I've got about a 15 foot leader here. I'm just going to flip it out, keep contact, and hope for the best. How's the bottom? I can feel just right away when something does take. Flipping it right out. Watching the different colors in my line. And if they do any weird movement, anything sudden, I'm gonna set on. Right there, oh. Okay. I could've been the fish, it might've been the bottom because I'm getting in real shallow there felt something stop. The lower angle, I'm keeping the line a little tighter. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my 
stance here. I'm just shaking in excitement because I know there's fish in there. I can't see them as well now because I'm a lot lower. So there's still, even with polarized glasses, a little glare that blocks my view of the fish. So the only contact I have with my aquatic environment, these trout, is my leader. And I'm paying attention to every discrepancy in its movements. Right there. To set the hook successfully. <laughs> okay. Sliding in, pulling them out of the group. Oh! I'm gonna move down here to try to not spook the rest of the school. And uh, Ariel's all sorts of excited, I know that. The hands wet, beautiful cutthroat trout. Snake River Cuddy. And you can see I had to keep changing it. I had a bump, I had to keep the line tight. And as soon as I felt the discrepancy, I lifted up and this guy welcomed me on a little pheasant tail. So there are three basic styles of leaders that I wanna show you today. And one of the most common, probably the most common for sure, is just a standard monofilament tapered leader. And I've got it here on a Montana Rod Smith kind of prototype bamboo rod. Um, but I'm throwing it, I've got it connected with a blood knot there. And you can see where the thickness of the butt of the leader is close to that of the fly line there. And then as you get down, it gradually tapers. And the end of the leader is right there. And at that blood knot, I've got a tippet section. And that tippet section, this tapers down to a 3X on the leader. 3x tippet, so those are the same diameter, but the tippet is level. This does not taper, it is 3x all the way down to my point fly. And I've got a little purple haze, dry fly on point, more 3x tippet tied to the bend of the fly, down to a wet fly dropper. In this case, I've just got a little soft hackle, kind of generic flashy fly I tied up with a bead. And that's just a typical way to start fishing. This is probably what you'll see mostly when you go to any fly shop, this is what they're gonna show you to use. Fat butt, thin tip, and that's a, t a monofilament tapered leader. A lot of debris and insects can get caught. In a Back Eddie, oh! And so fish will stack up there, and uh, like this, healthy. Okay. But it came up, hammered the dry fly. And uh, there we go. Ah, little rainbow characteristics with that solid stripe and little cutty characteristics. Definitely probably a cut though. And uh, very hungry, came up and hammered that dry fly. So the dry got one, the dropper got one by uh, beautiful deliveries with a tapered leader. But what it looks like to me is that a lot of these fish are hitting emergers. And one classic way that I love to fish is by swinging wet flies, which a lot of anglers say look like an emerging caddis pupa or maybe even a mayfly swinging up through the surface because you kind of give a sweep through the current. And I'm gonna switch to a furled leader and fish with the classic wet flies. And these are gonna be soft tackle wet flies because they're my favorite. And uh, right after this, we'll set up with the furled leader, swing some soft tackle wet flies and see if we can't fool even more trout. Another type of leader design is a furled leader. And I'll show you how I get to that. I start, again, I've got this on a bamboo rod. A classic rod, furled leaders are kind of classic because you can make them at home. Um, although there are companies that make them themselves because they've got formulas and they do it a lot quicker probably than we can. Um, but I've got a floating fly line. And off my fly line, I've got some mildly stiff monofilament. And I've got a couple of different knots here. This gives me a little bit more indication to change in the colors helps me see my line as it gets down onto the water. And then because my furl leader starts with a loop, this one's tied by Joe Sanders out of Idaho and uh, known as Low Tech Joe online. Um, I tied a loop, a perfection loop there on the monofilament. So I got a loop to loop connection. And now you can see I've got a pink twisted material. 
and it goes from fat, like, like the monofilament, this is a twisted filament, not quite as smooth, but the twists start fat and then go slightly thin down here. And then I've got them tied down onto a tippet ring. And it's a little metal ring that actually floats. Um, so I got that tippet ring and because I'm changing materials, I'm gonna go from the furled nylon material uh, to the monofilament on my tippet end. And from that tippet section off the tippet ring, I'm changing diameters from slightly thicker down to a little bit thinner. So I've got a little bit of a taper going here and then I'm gonna attach my flies. There's my point wet fly and my dropper wet fly because I just really like to swing wet flies with furled leaders. Furled leaders do help because they go from fat to thin, they help unroll things. But because they're kind of a twisted nylon material, if you put grease on it, a little silicone floatant, you can help float them. Or you can just let them soak up a bunch of water and you can fish nymphs pretty accurately because it'll sink, but not as accurately as say a uh, more of a thin leader that we'll look at next on the check nymphing leader. Okay, I've got the flies switched out. I've actually got three flies on now in slightly different patterns. I'm gonna go right back through the hole. These fish have been rested for at least 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, I only poked myself with a hook once and I'm just bleeding a little bit. It's okay, everything's good. There we go. New flies, same fish, same water. Just switching up the presentation a little bit. And hoping for a different result. Thank you. Oh, there we go. Hit a fish I wasn't even looking for. Came up and hit this olive kind of wet fly jig. Oh, beautiful fish. Again, pulling it up river where it wants to go. <laughs> I didn't even disturb the fish that I was trying to get. Oh, and this is a different kind of cutthroat. This one has large round spots concentrated towards the tail. This is a Yellowstone cutthroat trout. And you can see the huge round spots on that thing. Such a beautiful cutty. This is the one that's actually native to this part of the bighorns. Maybe or maybe not this far up in the drainage. Um, just a beautiful native fish and it just nailed an olive jig. Fishing with a furled leader on a bamboo rod. All right, buddy. Go make more Yellowstone cutties. So I'm close, I've gotten two refusals already. They're not taking it though, I just saw the flash as I was lifting it up. So I'm gonna have to switch my flies. Dark, it seems like it might be getting more of a reaction than I kinda put some bright ones on. Oh, I did put a dark olive one on, I don't know. It's fun to kinda dial it in and fool them. Right there. Just saw that pink leader move just a little bit. And I set, and I found this. A beautiful Snake River Cutthroat Trout. Just such fun fish to go for. I don't know, a lot of the lore of the West and the Northwest was bamboo rods, wet flies, and cutthroat trout. To come here and do this, high in the mountains, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I do have a synthetic net, so maybe that takes away from it. But the rod's bamboo, the leader's furl, just like they used to do forever. They've been doing furled leaders for quite a while. It's a very simple method and it's still successful now in the 21st century as it was 
I don't know, probably in the 17th century, 18th century maybe, if you want to get too modern with it. Classic and it's still working. I'm gonna keep at it and just watch the details and the subtle sets and takes. We'll be catching fish all day. Another way in, to fish with a leader design in particular is called Czech or Euro nymphing. Um, just got to be really popular in Europe during the fly fishing tournaments. The Czechs would just kind of wind up really long leaders. They didn't have money for fly line apparently, purportedly, that's what I hear. And so they just made really long lines and threw heavy nymphs with them. I've just got an Albright knot coming off the loop of my fly line there. And then a whole bunch of different colored lines with a whole bunch of knots and every single one of these knots helps me see my line better. So these colored lines in your Euro nymphing leaders got to be known as sighters because it increases your sight on the line. If I see that line while it's floating through the water, if I see it do that, more of a bend, I set the hook. And sometimes if I'm floating through the water and I don't see it do anything, if it just stays like this floating in the breeze, just like I'm, and I'm pulling it down the river and I think there's a fish there, I still set the hook. But what helps you is that any change in this line with all those knots and the ciders will help you see better. And then after all the colors, go down to a tippet ring again. And now I've got clear monofilament. This is fluorocarbon tippet. More knots going down just slightly. And even though I have a change in diameter, overall my whole diameter is way thinner. It's man, about a tenth of the diameter of the butt of a tapered leader. And that helps your flies sink that much deeper. And now I get to my when I join my tippet and I want flies, I leave a tag on my blood knot and I attach a nymph off that dropper. You don't have to do this, but this is typical in tournament fishing. Uh, you can just tie directly to the point, the head of the, fly, the eye of the fly into the bend of the hook to do your, run your dropper. But there's your point fly or your first dropper. And then you keep going on down the line. These are really long leaders. And so I use a really long fly rod. There's dropper number two. And then the third one is just right on, straight in line with it. Dropper number three, a little tiny guy because my other two are kind of heavy. And it's got a tungsten bead, it'll get down deep. But running those three, we're legal, it's legal to fish three flies here. Um, you can just swing that down, get a nice long drift with a really long leader so you're not using much fly line. And you can do that. This is about a 10 and a half foot rod, it's graphite. I and mean, again, this is a Rod Smith prototype, Rod Montana Rod Smith prototype. And it's just one that I've been using to try out these really long Euro nymph or what I like to call contact nymphing because I've been doing it since I was a little kid before I knew about check nymphing. Just fishing 2x tippet down to 4x tippet. A really simple line, super narrow, enough to turn over a line. A level line will turn over a fly. So if that's the case, you don't really need a whole big step. You can just go straight 3x if you wanted and you can still turn your flies over but fat to thin does help. But with nymphs, you're gonna get them a lot deeper with this Euro check contact nymphing, call it what you will, style of leader. Letting out a little more fly line, a little bit lengthier cast there. And I'm still able with this really long rod, it's about 10 and a half feet. It's a prototype Montana rod smith rod that I'm using. I'm beating it up pretty good, but I've been real happy with its ability to do this style of fishing, which is just kind of pick up a long leader, lay it down, and keep great direct contact with your flies, whether they're dry or wet. There we go. Oh, that's one of the good ones. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Oh, just beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, took my pheasant tail again and by keeping that super tight line just and just yanking on it when I think there's a fish even sometimes, oftentimes there's a fish. Beautiful. They love to be kissed just like any other fish.
little bit deeper pool here. There we go. Oh, that's a good fish. That is hyper. <laughs> a really strong fish. Not much bigger than mostly what I've been catching, but oh, it's fighting with gusto. We'll slip it into the net. And Cuddy. Oh, that's the Snake River Cuddy. Beautiful fish. Fight really hard. Out on for a leader. So you can roll cast, you can flip flies, you can throw wets, you can throw dries, and you can use about every method of fishing that you want with any leader, but some are a little bit better than others. And I hope what you've seen is those, the longer leaders, the narrow diameters and those check nymph leaders, or what I like to call contact nymphing, um, you can throw dry flies with them. It's just that they don't unroll as easily. And you can fish nymphs with a tapered leader. It's just that your nymphs aren't gonna get as deep and you're not gonna have the direct contact that you'll have with a leader designed for nymphing. Furled leaders are kind of right in the middle. Um, very classic and they are great at unrolling flies. They won't sink quite as quick as narrow diameter leaders. So you can use kind of the plus and minus of all these designs to increase your catching ability if you pay attention to the line. And I hope you noticed one of the most important things that I've used is bright colors in my leaders. A lot of people say that bright colors will spook the fish, but you can see today I've drifted my fly right over the tops of fish, my rod right over the tips, and the leader right over top of the fish, and I haven't spooked them. I'm still catching fish, and the only thing that they really need is the right fly delivered in the right way. By paying attention, getting the sun coming up, just right on the solstice. Might have a little bit to do with it, but pay attention to everything around you and you'll have just as much luck on your home waters as I did here today.